Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Barton Power Sports, Sportsman's Warehouse, and Best Care Home Services. Hey, welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray as uh, we close out the fastest 90 minutes in outdoor radio programming on this uh, Saturday, September the 9th. Uh, of course, it means that Ron Wong is in the studio. And, Good morning, uh, everybody. It has gone by fast, right, Ron? It really has. I mean, we have really talked to some wonderful, wonderful people and some people that you've heard of before. You, yeah. Jason no. Christie, uh, a guy named Bill Dance. Do you, you yeah, know Bill Dance. Him? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, I've read, yeah. run into him a couple of times. And I love to talk uh, chestnuts. With, that uh, was a great. With, that, that uh, was a great with, segment. With Bob Wallace down there in Florida, and we didn't get into the weather, but he's uh, bracing for Hurricane Irma. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, today, who knows but, what's going to uh, happen? What a great way to close out the show with a, a friend of outdoors, Larry Ray. We're, we're 17 years coming in the air, and I know Buck Knives has been uh, really supportive of us over the years, and we've actually caught um, C.J. Buck at home which is, is good to be in Idaho at this time of the year. I can't imagine what's, uh, what does it look like in Idaho in September, CJ? Well, this year is, uh, is a little unique. We've had, uh, the, we've had a horribly smoky week. Oh, yeah. So mm, it's it's that's right. finally clearing out. So we had a wonderful Labor Day, nice and warm, Yeah, like, you know, last weekend. Yeah. And, uh, and then the on Monday, it just the, smoke, the smoke came in. Wow. So we don't have any fires right around us but this coming so in from west of you they're, they're coming in from west of you though i mean they're, they're coming in oregon uh, oregon's southwest added. of us yes yeah east of us and north of us so wow. canada montana and uh and oregon but it will be beautiful i know fall is beautiful in idaho been there done that and i know it is but uh good to talk to you cj i know that uh hey i didn't realize that uh you know Next year will be your 40th anniversary uh, to be with Buck Knives. I, you know, I'm, I, I, I had. Thank you for reminding me. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> 19, I mean, not that you've never been part of it. I mean, you went to school and all those different kind of things. But it's a really amazing when you look back on on Buck Knives itself, and you look back on your grandfather and your dad, and now you. Uh, the technology has really changed, but at the same time, you're still putting out the same buck knife quality, aren't you? Well, that's very true. I think uh, you know processes change, but but commitment to providing value to customers doesn't change, and that that really started with my great grandfather. Yes grandfather and and dad uh didn't let it waver and i'm trying my best not to let it waver either no well you're in the cutlery hall of fame i mean that's uh how much butter can you get then from, <laughs> from, yeah you know we are the the only uh three gen- <laughs> we, we have three generations of bucks in the uh cutlery hall of fame well wow. you've got cool. it was quite an honor You've come a long way from Oral Roberts University, CJ. I'm not. You, you can tell I can. <laughs> yeah, <die>. sure. <laughs> you definitely have. But talk about what's going on now. I know you guys uh, uh, are always coming. I can't believe it's the 75th anniversary of that famous one 119 special that Hoyt Buck. That was his first knife, right? It was not his first knife, um, but uh, but he was in Mountain Home, Idaho. Yeah, he was in Mountain Home, Idaho, working in the basement of a church he was pastoring, and there's a local Air Force base right there. Uh huh. So he was making knives for the servicemen, and and kind of stumbled on this perfect design of you know not too big, not too small, not right. too heavy, not too light. This nice little balance, a uh, little over five inch blade. Uh, feels good in your hand, uh, and and he treated with the 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 in, the intuitive heat treat <laughs> skill that yeah. my great grandfather had. He did it all by color, color and smell. Amazing color and smell. And we're talking to C.J. Buck uh, uh, of Buck Knives, uh, based in Post Falls, Idaho. And now you've got early this year. You came out with the uh, the one hundred one hunter. Which I I have uh, I like the way it feels and I like the way it costs. You guys have, have 
it's hard to come out with something. Uh, and Ron was talking about you guys are really into fishing now uh, is part of it. Yep. You're into hunting. And maybe a lot of folks don't know that Buck Knives is, is into fishing so heavily. Ron, you well, were talking they, about that. they really are. And, and uh, you know, I see some of the things that they've come out with over the years. Uh, uh, just a couple of years ago, we, they came out with a tool or an accessory called a splitzer. <laughs> the splitzer, yes. Uh, the splitzer is, is the real <laughs> deal. And now you guys have a saltwater version of it also, right? Yeah, we did a uh, we did a Cerakote uh, coating a little higher end to handle more of the corrosive environment in saltwater. But the, what what that does for all of you that are in the fishing world, there, it does away with you don't have to carry pliers, you don't have to carry something to cut your line, you don't have to carry things to cut baits with like your soft baits if you want yeah. to do anything yeah it does everything one tool does everything it's it's pretty amazing what this does yeah. and it, uh, was, it was designed by one of our uh, pro staff uh-huh. uh, members and and uh, we yeah. it, it has the plier tip on right. the tip and it has replaceable blades for the scissors i saw that that's awesome yeah yes and then, and then you also have because it's got so much tension between the two sides as a pair of scissors. Right. Nothing, nothing can slip sideways. So you can cut braided line. Uh, you That's can cut important. light wire. It's just amazing. And you know, you guys now have a fairly new product too, a fishing nippers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. And of course, the Mister Crappie Slab Stinger uh, Slinger. <laughs> you've had that out, which is a great knife for flying. But the fishing nippers, uh, that caught my eye, too. Something that cuts mono line, and it has what they, you call an eye popper. You know, how many times have we picked up a fishing jig, and you can't put your line through it to tie it on because you got paint all over it? you got a tool that, that takes care of that. You know, it's, it's one of those elements where when you're actually working with people who are using the product, uh, mm-hmm. you... You end up coming up with all these very useful additions, and that's what we always try and do. Well, I, I you know, getting back to my style, and, and that's hunting, <laughs> you know, because I'm 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 so big into that now. I see it over. I see the nipper over there. Yeah, it uh, it's it's not. That's in, pretty cool. Yeah, it's not in uh, watermelon red or anything like that. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> but it, but it's going to work well. It's going to work well. Well, so is the one on one hundred. It's worked well for us. i you know that. You you said that some people wanted that in a fixed plate, right? I mean, it it was normally the first one I had. I think was a, uh, a you know, like a folding knife, but now the one on one is in a fixed blade, right? Yes, sir. Is that? Yeah, the, yeah. We, we it's it's a full slab handle, so it's a it's a solid piece of steel. Won't go anywhere in your hand, but you you have the same basic grip. Same basic size and shape of a 110 folding hunter, and that 110 folding hunter is the you know most accomplished deer skinning knife yes, in yes. the history of the planet. Yes, it is, and I, I don't go I don't go hunting without it. You know, I, I may I may forget my cell phone, but I've got my I've got my knife in there because I know in, in the edge. A lot of folks don't realize this thing, but uh, you guys are famous for uh, for holding the edge of that. That knife, and I don't know how you do it. I don't know what the where this all came from, whether he's a granddad or what. But uh, holding the edge is important to me because if I'm out in the field and I'm trying to uh, uh, move around this 150 uh, pound deer and get to where I, I want to, I want that edge to be sharp, and I don't have to keep keep resharpening it all the time. How, <laughs> tell me how that come about. Okay, well it's a it's a uh, it's a combination of proper heat treat, so okay. you can't say too much about making sure that that knife's been properly heat treated. Uh-huh. And then it is there's there's edge geometry involved. Okay. So there's edge angles. So the more blunter the edge, the the less sharp it'll be. The more steep the angle of the edge, the the sharper it'll be. Uh, and then there's also internal processes so that you don't and it's hard to it's hard to visualize this on the radio, but it, there's there's processes involved so that you keep that angle straight. You don't want 
your buffing wheel to spill over the top of the edge and make it dull. And that may or may not make sense. but uh, It makes sense to me because I know your Edge 2X technology is yeah. is is is, is what's, what this is all about. And, and we hand sharpen. We hand sharpen everything. These guys get, they have instincts. They, they match from side to side. Uh, they're so, uh, just very highly skilled individuals. So these knives do not leave buck knives until they've been hand sharpened. I mean, hand edged yes, and things. Wow. Uh, that's They've what, been hand sharpened wow. and hand tested, every single one of them. So how many versions of knives do you have? <laughs> too many. <laughs> huh? If you if you ask our manufacturing folks, we have too many different. Yeah, that's, that's exactly yeah. right. And, and I got to ask you before we close, and I always ask these, and I'm pretty dumb about I just things come to my mind. But CJ, uh, this career as a buck, when people meet you or whatever it is, uh, do, do you feel like that you're where you that you're where your granddad and your dad wanted you to be? I mean, you was there a time that you said I don't have anything to do with knives? <laughs> Actually, no. I have always really. You know, I've never been a knife collector. Uh, How many knives but, do you have? You got one in your pocket? What do you carry? What does CJ? Oh buy? yeah, I have a a. Uh, uh, it's called a marksman. It's a it's a one hand opener. Okay. I don't know if you can uh, if you can hear it. Oh, I hear it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. It is cool. It's always in my pocket. It's always so in. I have CJ. a one hand clip knife in my pocket. Okay. Well, you know, I told him I got the little buck. It's always in my pocket, <laughs> unless I lose it and forget it, and it's in the wrong pocket. And today I don't have my. I don't. I feel like I'm. Uh, I'm not have all my clothes on because I don't have my little. You feel half naked. No. I really <laughs> That's do. Right. Now, CJ yeah. Buck has said it on the air. I feel <laughs> half naked. Well, you, that, know, well, you know what I'm impressed about also with Buck Knives is what's that? You can get anything that they have personalized. Uh, oh, what yeah. other company? Yeah, and it, in it, the world that does that with such a quality product. Well, and that's what I'm, yeah. I'm so impressed with. Well, CJ, I know that uh, you're a busy man. Thank you for taking time to be on a, uh, outdoors with Larry Ray. Tell oh, Rachel, buddy. tell Rachel she's good, and keep me posted on what's going on. And uh, if there's something new, uh, tell her I can't find my little buck knife, so it's gone. But it may, <laughs> it, it may. I, I could use a brother if it comes along, or a sister to a knife. Okay, so <laughs> we'll do. All right, buddy. Thank you. Have a great day, right, and thanks, we'll, we'll talk to you again. C.J. Buck, we got to close out today's show. Wow, we've had fun. Uh, don't forget uh, today out at the, uh, 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 the at the Brighton at the Holly Grove Cumberland Presbyterian Church out in Brighton, uh, the Hunter D. Stafford Memorial Wildlife supper and everything else going on tomahawk throwing ham on a string uh a ham on uh, a string sounds good to me that sounds good to you greg ratliff thank you for taking care of i actually got to meet greg's little twins and uh oh cool well i met one of them the other one had a sheet over her head she didn't want <laughs> me to <laughs> see <laughs> right funny. So, she's usually the one that's outgoing and the other one's usually the shy one today really? yeah okay weird. well i got to meet uh well, she didn't want you to scare her no but they are really cute and i'm glad awesome. they i'm glad thank they you. look like they're the their, their mama there you know <laughs> so uh, either one of them had a beard i noticed that for a fact but uh and you know uh, we remember to practice good water safety. You always Please. say that. And let's do. Let's don't forget uh, special prayers from some friends of mine, the Tigners. Uh, Willard Tigner, my best friend, uh, passed away recently, and I had the opportunity to do his eulogy at his funeral in Bolivar. And uh, I love those Tigner families. But remember, next week Frank Barton will be our co-host. We're going to talk to Christy. Christy Pike, she's the CEO of Pros Hunting and Field Apparel. I love to talk to Christy because she's in Gunnison, Colorado. Never know what the weather might be out there, but I do know that we're going to close by saying it never costs an extra cent to be a good sport, and God bless the USA. You can find out.